I'm Jennifer, Impact Red on Ravelry. Hi, I'm Julia, Sapphire Child on Ravelry. And this is Drop Stitches Podcast. Now, why is it Drop Stitches? Well, we're coming to you with the assistance of Dutch Courage here, because we're kind of introverted. <laughs> <laughs> so, I guess what we're going to do in this podcast is we're going to tell you about our crafting, which is going to be a lot of knitting and spinning, like a lot of other podcasts that you've seen. Uh, you'll probably see some sewing, and we'll probably talk about maybe some books or some other random things. Whatever catches our fancy. It's not going to be real formal here. Um, but since we're drinking, we're also going to tell you about the wine that we're drinking. So, why don't we start with that. So, you want to grab the bottle there? And we'll show the label. This is the Elf Run Pinot Noir. Uh... Is it just Pinot Noir? Is there? Yep. Cold Friday Vineyard. Okay. Yeah. So Elf Run is a vineyard in um, in Maryland, not far from where I live. Uh, I think they're actually in Frederick County, but they might be in Carroll County. They are, if you're interested, within striking distance of the Maryland Sheep and Wool Festival and well worth the trip. There aren't very many wineries in Maryland, but this one is quite good. They produce a wide variety of wines with good flavor, good body, all the all the goodies that you need. Yep. Um, not a bit of it is alcoholic sugar water. It's all <laughs> <laughs> it's it's good wine, um, which is actually fairly unusual among Maryland wineries. <laughs> uh, no hate mail, please. Uh, <laughs> so uh, uh, I I picked out this wine. Um, I've gotten to like Pinot Noir recently because it's it's a very easy drinking wine and it you know it's good by itself it's good with lots of food and and this one's no exception it's 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 fruity it's very mellow um, just a very pleasant wine what's your impression it's very good she has got me into the Pinot how do you say it Pinot Noir <laughs> Pinot Noir I can't even say the wine but before that, I was mainly a white wine drinker, and um, she had me pick some of this up for a party, and I brought it, and it turned out to be really good, and so since then, I've been looking for this wine in, um, when I go shopping for wine. So, um, and it is very good. It's, like she said, it's easy drinking, fruity, not too sweet, um, yeah, I'm personally not it's a big not fan too of oaky, sweet. and I'm not a yeah. big oak. I don't like a big oaky flavor. Well, that's a pretty pretty typical characteristic of, of Pinot Noir. It's it's it is aged in oak, but I don't think it's aged in. Well, Elk Run is very good about the kind of oak they use too. Um, a lot of those wines that you get that kind of taste like toothpicks, they're aged in American oak. Oh, which is a bit more harsh than the French oak. So that helps. Um, uh, I, I don't really know a lot else about what makes Pinot Noir different, although I, I believe it is a specific grape. Um, so, it's very good. Anyway, we recommend it. Cheers! Cheers. And like I said, within probably about 20, 30 minutes tops from the fairgrounds where they hold Maryland Sheep and Wool, so I recommend checking it out if you are coming to town for that in May and, and have some time to kill. Okay, so, uh, should we go on to finished objects? Sure. Um, Your list is much longer, so would you like to start? Yeah, so, <laughs> I, I kind of, uh, uh, I have rabies, I guess, with my crafting, and um, <laughs> I, I, I produce a lot, so I didn't produce, I didn't um, bring a whole, well, I didn't bring all of the things that I've done in the last month. Oh, we didn't already say, I think we'll probably be recording about once a month, just so it'll fit in with our schedule reasonably. Um, so, but I, I brought some more recent stuff, and just, a, just a selection. So the first thing I have is um, a little beanie um, camera. There you go. The colors turned out beautifully. This is this yarn is um, from Hope Spinnery. Let's get a little washed out. There we go. 
Hope Spinnery, which is in Maine. And uh, I picked up this yarn at the New York Sheep and Wool Festival. And uh, this is a wind powered studio and they use natural dyes. And there we go, label. And as you can see, he does a really awesome job with colors. And this is just a, a basic, there really isn't a pattern involved here. This is just an as you go adult sized beanie. And uh, the yarn, I love the yarn, has a very nice woolly feel yeah. to it. So, okay. And then the next thing on my list, I brought, this is Dissipative, Dissipative, whatever, by Alicia Landy. And I've got some leftovers. This is made out of leftover yarns. Uh, this is the Plymouth Mushy Mushy. And this purple is uh, that inexpensive uh, Stitch Nation by Debbie Stroller Alpaca Love. Um, both are just leftover bits of worsted-ish yarn from other products projects and it's a cow. Very easy, very fun, pretty quick. And then the third knitted thing that I brought, this is something I've been working on and off for a long time. This is Houndspun, handspun lace weight out of um, merino bamboo that I got from Creative Who Died several years ago. And out of four ounces, I had gotten, um, it looks like a cobweb. <laughs> I had gotten around 900 yards, and I only used about two-thirds of that, I think. Um, sorry, no, at about, at about three, three and a half ounces, it was nine, 900 yards. Um, I lost a little bit of fiber in a, in a, in a yarn barf accident. Close. And, uh, anyway, yeah, so this is about, this is about two ounces, I guess, here, and, um, this pattern is, uh, Nefertari by Anna Dalvi from her book, um, uh, the Egyptian Lace book, I think it was. Anyway, so, I'm really, I'm really pleased with this. It's cobwebby nature. Anyway, so... Uh, why don't you show some of your stuff? Okay, well, I have a few. I have one that actually finished right before the New York Sheep and Fiber Festival, so I'll show that one because this is my first real knitting project that I did. Yay. And I'm very pleased with the way it turned out. And this is Color Affection. Uh, Vera Valmaki. Vera, yeah, Vera Valmaki. And the yarn is from Mrs. Babs Hand Dyed Yarn. And I don't think she makes the, um, the last time I was at the, the Sheep and Wool Festival, I was looking for the white, which is actually a multicolored white. And that one was A Day at Pals is the name of the, was the name of the yarn, but I didn't see it this last time because I was looking for it. And then the pewter is like a gray, and then the red is called Vlad, I think. And, uh, but it turned out really nice. Um, it's big. And it's very large. Um, I used larger needles than it said. And I actually ran out of um, the red right at the very end. So it ended a couple rows shorter than the pattern said because of that. You really can't tell, though. No, you can't tell. It's so large anyway. Who would know? The funny thing is you ran out in the middle of the row, right? Yeah, I ran out in the middle of the row. <laughs> so I just switched over to the... Um, the red and white, the white mix, and you you don't even see it. So it turned out really it's well. It's not noticeable at all. Mm -mm. No, but it turned out really well. So that's um, my first finished knitting project. And then this is a sewing project that I did. Um, I'm in a craft group at home at my house, and we meet like once every two weeks. And um, um, Janet, that's the name of the lady who kind of runs the craft group at her place. And this is, isn't that cute? So cute. It's a little um, Christmas tree napkin. And see, all it is is like, see that half circle? Double-sided. 
and then with a little little stump, <laughs> little stump at the bottom, and then the way you, when you fold it, it makes that um, that Christmas tree shape, and then of course you press it. That is really cute. And that's that's just, really cute. Yeah. Just like quilters cotton, right? Yeah, it's just cotton. So how does this group work? Do you you all do the same projects or? Sometimes, like uh, when I was trying to get this done, I would go and watch them work while I knitted because it had to be done by <laughs> Sheep and Wool Festival. So, so I'm like, yeah, I can't, I can't craft right now. I have to do this. But normally we will um, at least do similar projects. Um, but we're always welcome to bring whatever we're working on. So um, I actually did a pillowcase last time I was there, and that was right before Christmas. But I didn't bring that because it's on my bed. And then. This one is one we also made in the craft group, which is, I love this because I wear it every morning. And this is an old sweatshirt that I took. And you just um, cut it down the center. Let me see if I can show that. So you cut it down the center. And then you put, um, like, some kind of edging on it. Like, when I st started it, um, I had put the edging on and then folded it back, you know, like this. And I didn't like it, so I ripped it out, and I put like a bias tape on the inside to finish it off on the inside. And then on the outside, I put the ribbon back on again, and it gives it a much more finished look. And then you can do a zipper, which I haven't done. I've thought about it, or buttons or something like that. But it's really comfortable because it's a sweatshirt, and um, it just it's really comfortable to wear. And this is what I wear in the morning. And I know some people have done them and then they wear them. They use, I guess, a better sweatshirt, maybe not like a decal on it. And um, they wear it to work and stuff like that. So like a cardigan. Mm-hmm. That's true. And um, but I just wear mine in the morning like my bathrobe. <laughs> because it's nice and soft. Scandalous. Yes. <laughs> so and that's it for my um, finished projects that I have today. Awesome. Well, I have a couple of sewing projects too, so I'll show those. I have. I love that. Why is it so cute? Yeah, that's the front. So we have. <laughs> this is polar fleece. This is a pattern I found online. Um, it's just a basic hat pattern with some little spikes, and you put a little stuffing in there. And, um, you know, basically out of almost no polar tech fleece, just like some scraps and a third of a yard. Super easy, um, and um, and then this this other one, which I, so cute, uh, is the basic hat pattern, and then I just cut out some shapes and made the flower. That wasn't part of the pattern, um, you know, like little detail stitching there. I thought that was fun. Yeah, so I'm gonna give these to our brother's kids. Um, hopefully they'll they'll take them. I don't know. <laughs> Um, okay, and then the other stuff that I have to share with you guys, hang on, let me unearth my pile here. Um, okay, I've got some hand spun to show. Okay, did you so, do that? did you do this one? Yeah. Wow. This is, this is my hand spun, not like stuff I bought. This is stuff I spun. I love that color. So, this is, um, where's the tag? This is Columbia, and I bought this. This is roving from Solitude Wool. Um, Solitude Wool is a fairly local company. They're they're based in Northern Virginia, um, and uh, they produce some pretty awesome stuff, frankly, and uh, especially for people who are interested in breed specific yarns. You know, yarns that are made out of particular breeds of sheep, other than merino. Because obviously merino is really easily accessible, but um, other breeds maybe not so much. So they produce a lot of yarns that are that are like that uh, for those that don't spin them. But they also do sell fiber, um, dyed, dyed or natural fiber for anybody who spins. So and there's yeah, there's the tag. Let's see if we can get the camera. There we go. You can sort of read that if you squint. Okay, there you go. Um, <laughs> or do full screen. Yeah. <laughs> so this is this is just uh, this was just a solid purple. Okay. And then the next thing I have is this is some fiber. Let me peel apart the label. Fiber that I picked up when I was at um, SSK this summer. 
um, from the local yarn shop, actually. It was a local dyer. Um, Daily Fibers, it's a mixed, meaning um, colored and white, blue face lesser and Tussa silk, um, and hand painted. And um, this is a three ply. Spun kind of worsted. You can't see it, the colors terribly well, I don't think. But it, it the colorway is called Fall Roast, and it, it really looks at it. It's got some blues and like a purpley brown and, and golden yellows. Um, very fall colors. Um, uh, this is uh, Navajo plied, so three ply, to keep the colors together. Alright. And then we have um, some random... <laughs> These were some samples that I got from uh, uh, Singleton Mill, Fiber Mill, something like that, which is another local to me place. Um, uh, there was a Jacob and Alpaca blend and a fine wool, um, and I I just did I had twice about a little more than twice as much as the Jacob Al Alpaca blend, so I spun that a little thicker and the fine wool a little thinner, and so I ended up with a, a true three ply, and uh, one ply is the the white fine wool, but um, I really like a. a like a down wool alpaca blend, that comes out nice. Um, the people that run this mill are very nice. And then the last thing I have to share, this is I have the many things today, but uh, <laughs> um, this is, I was lucky enough to get one of the test bats from Joanna of Knit Spin Farm. There's her card, isn't that cute? This one is called uh, Neon Sparkle. It's got Angelina, Border Lesseter Locks, Blue Face Lesseter, Romany, Sorry Silk, Silk Noil, South Down, and Merino. It was a small bat because it was just a test bat. It was a one and an eighth ounce. And I just, just did a kind of a random two ply with that. Um, it was really awesome to spin. She did a great job with her bats. Um, they're, they're very woolly and I like that very squishy and woolly and they have a lot of life to them which is enjoyable okay blah 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 <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's go into uh, works in progress what have you got to share? okay so I only have uh, one work in progress right now I have crafts at home, but not with me. But this is my knitting work in progress. Oh yeah, well, on that point, I guess we should we should mention we live pretty far apart, mm -hmm. which is part of the reason why we won't be recording as often as some people. Um, so we're coming to you today from my mother's guest bedroom. <laughs> <laughs> this is actually something I made many many years ago. Um, and I'm using it for a project bag, which I think is really, really cute. And I love the colors. I have to show you the colors. See, aren't they cute? Anyway, so... It's got it, little flowers on it. Yeah, it's really, really cute. And um, and it's lined in this beautiful blue. But it's um, it's a little small, but it's perfect for this because it's just a one scheme project that I'm making. And um, I am... Uh, this is the yarn that I'm using. It's from Feederbrook Farm. And the name is Forest. You picked that up in New York too, didn't you? I picked this up in this New York. York. Yes, I did. And uh, this is Which yarn. Is beautiful. Because Feeder Book Farm is like right around the corner from us in Maryland. Is it Maryland? <laughs> yeah. Well, they're north of Baltimore, but... Oh, they are. Yeah, yeah it doesn't have the address close. on here. I'm, I'm actually in Richmond, so... Yeah. I'm a little bit far from that. Yeah. Um, but this is what I'm... My pattern that I'm making myself. And I saw these things, like these cowls, at um, the festival, and I was going to buy a pattern, but it looked to me like all it was was a scarf with some buttons on it, so that's what I'm going to do. So, and this is the, I mean, I, it was another pattern. I started out going to make ribs, like ribs, but it didn't, it wasn't turning out the way I wanted to, so now I'm going to do this patchwork thing. Can you see that? It's like a patchwork. So we'll see how that turns out. And I'm just going to make a scarf and then put buttons on it, kind of like 
diagonal buttons, like three buttons, and then that would be it. But I love the colors. Very, very fall colors, I guess, although it does have blue in it. But it's just, I love the colors. You have to show you that again. Isn't that pretty? <laughs> and, um, and that is um, the only knitting project I'm working on right now. Although I have others in the queue, which I want to make. But um, since I'm just new at knitting, I think I better not try to start more than one at a time. So, <laughs> so that is my works in project. Right? That was it, right? Yeah, did you bring anything else? Nope. No, okay. I brought stuff that I want to work on, but... <laughs> um, <laughs> well, if we get into things we want to make that, yeah, that, that could, could take, take a day. long time. <laughs> yeah. All right, so I only brought two works in progress. And I'll show you the one I'm happy with first. So um, this is in my... This is in a Fat Squirrel Fibers bag. And this is an awesome bag. Um, this is... Uh, pardon me. I need my show notes. Clothified? <laughs> By Christian Cardozo? Uh, sorry. Yeah, that's the best I can do. Um, and the yarn is um, Knit Picks City Tweed DK in the brocade colorway. Oh, that's pretty. It's like a purple... But it, yeah, it's it's a really warm, yeah. rich purple. Um, oops, I'm not. I I think that their their pictures online are fairly true to the actual it's color. It's like a they really are. really deep or dark. And grape? Would you call yeah. it a grape purple? Yeah, it is almost grapey. Yeah. Can you see that? But it's it's not it's not a very cool purple, but it's I don't know, it's not really a warm purple either, I guess. Anyway. Yeah, it's like a fall purple, definitely fall purple. I'm nearly two balls in. I haven't quite gotten through the second ball. But I'm really close. Um and since this is a DK, of course, it's gonna be big, it's gonna be heavy. It, it, you know, it'll be plush. So I'm happy with it so far. It's a really, really easy pattern to memorize and, and uh, kind of quick, quick going. So I'm pleased with that. And then the other um, in, prog in progress oh, thank you, that I brought was, oh, it's down here, was I'm working on a... I started a second Earth and Sky, which is a pattern by uh, Stephen West, and I've done one before, and I love the pattern. It, it really does come out looking like stained glass. Now, who did, who did this bag? Um, oh, this is, I'm sorry, yeah, bag. This is from Joanna Spring. I want one of these bags. I think that is the coolest yeah, so, bag. By the way, Joanna, yeah, my sister loves because it bags. Has, because it has roosters on it. Yeah. <laughs> I love the chickens. <laughs> yeah. This is, I have two bags. I have several bags from Joanna, and two of them have chickens on them, just because I think it's awesome. I like chickens. I have chickens. Um, and anyway, so back to the project. <laughs> um, I, the Earth and Sky pattern, he says in his, in his description that it's inspired by stained glass, and it, it really does look like stained glass, and I'm really pleased with the pattern. Um, and I was pleased with my finished object, the first one I knit. I'm not digging this one. The colors, hmm. you know, I think on camera the colors aren't really showing true to you. And when I ordered this yarn, this is a Knit Picks yarn, um, Caprietta. When I ordered it, this blue looked more like a kind of like a sea green kind of color, which would have gone really well mm. with this purple. Yeah, I was thinking the purple doesn't really go with this color. That's what the problem is. Yeah, I was going to just, just plow through and make it anyway, because that's what I brought the yarn for. But I'm just, I've gotten this far, and I'm like, you know what, I really don't like it. It's not going to work for me. Um, the colors don't go well. The yarn works well for this pattern. I don't like the colors. So I'm going to rip it out. So yeah, I've seen one. I've seen, she had another finished one that's that same pattern different colors yeah and you had that at the fiber festival and that really really yeah. nice a lot of compliments when she was walking around on that too that one that other one i knit out of some some yarn i bought from solitude wool and it's in green and white two shades of green and white and um 
It's um, I love that one because it's it's like a down it's a down wool. Um, I don't remember which, um, but that makes it very spongy, and <laughs> yeah, yeah. It, it it has a really really interesting feel. I just I enjoy it. So, okay, so the next thing we have on our list is is some randomness for you. Not not that you know we aren't going to be totally random all the time. Um, but we have some yarn barf to share. Yes, I have some yarn barf to share. So last year at the New York Festival, sorry for coming out of the picture, I uh, purchased yarn for my son, who um, he's he's just turning to 16. So of course last year he was 15. But anyway, he just started working with this yarn. Isn't that lovely? Just beautiful. And uh, he didn't know how to wrap it in the ball. So um, instead of asking or stopping when he noticed a problem, he just kept on going until he wound up with this. <laughs> and he was just pulling the yarn and trying to do it well whatever. So anyway, um, so any new people out there, take a look at this and make sure you know how to unwrap your yarn so this doesn't happen to you. Right. <laughs> so I don't know if we can untangle that. I don't know. And he's already broken it twice trying to untangle it. And it's just, he threw this in the trash. And I thought, well, I'll just bring this today so I can show you. And it's a beautiful, beautiful yarn. It's so pretty. It's and like a dark blue-gray with, yes, it's with just sections of... Um, like a like a denim blue, yeah, and just earthy really. color. Yeah, it's beautiful. I don't even know who made it. It I would have been know. awesome socks. Yeah, it was just oh my gosh, it's so pretty. Anyway, um, so I don't think it's salvageable, but um, no, just just to show you what happens when someone doesn't know what they're doing. <laughs> and um, so this we're is just your too sad. Public service message for today. <laughs> So if you've never, probably most of you watching this know how to do it, but you have a skein of yarn, you know, it starts out looking like so, right? Not in a ball. So you unfold it, and then you have, sorry guys, I'm not good with the camera thing here. You remember the lenses, right? <laughs> sorry. Yeah, and it doesn't go this way, it goes this way. <laughs> left, left. Um, yeah. <laughs> Um, <laughs> I, need more, I need more wine. Yeah, maybe that's part of the problem. You know, a little too much social lubricant. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, yeah, so you unfold it and you have... Damn it. <laughs> <laughs> you have Lyso. And, you know, um, a lot of people will tell you you need a skein winder, you need a Swift, you need all this other equipment. Well, you don't. Um, those things are useful. And they will make your life easier, but if you're just starting out, you don't want to buy a lot of stuff, but you've bought a skein of yarn that's like this. You don't need it. Um, what I do is hook it around my knees. Let's see if we can display. Yeah, it's very scandalous. <laughs> um, <laughs> hook it around my knees or maybe cross my leg, and, and so one end of it is under my foot so that you, you're controlling it. Or you can also um, hook it around the back of a chair to keep it in order. Um, and then um, untie, untie the ties. Some of them will be ties. Some of them will be things that you just cut off. So just take a good look and see what you're, see what you're working with, and just start, you know, winding it gently into a ball. You don't have to throttle it. Um, and um, you know, there's no science to that either. Just wind, turn, wind, turn. Um, uh, what happened with that yarn? I think what you said is that he sort of just threw it on the table. Yeah, he just kind of laid it out and started laid pulling it out and then started pulling it. Like, and then of course, course right, and right. Just... And so as as the yarn, you know, wool wool has a tendency to grab itself. Yeah. So you know, it probably was sticking to the the next door strand, or it was pulling from underneath, or something like that, and it just sort of all started coming up, and then the next thing you know, it's all tangled. But if you have it looped around something, that that helps keep it in order quite a bit, and. Um, so you don't necessarily have to have any special equipment. I might have to get him some, though. <laughs> <laughs> and of course then I can use it, too. Well, yeah, there is that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I think the, um, the next thing we have on our list 
is um, we were going to do a little product review. When we were at New York, um, we both, um, this was our second trip to New York, and of course one of the first things that we do is we go into the, the soak booth. Um, mm -hmm. and, um, oops, sorry. <laughs> Jesus. He can just stay. Um, I think he's going to have to because it's under the bed. Okay. Um, <laughs> oh well. So we each got a bottle of flatter. Yep. And um, uh, mine is Yuzu, which is like a uh, really bright and intense orange fragrance. And what you got was the fig, fig. Mm -hmm. which smells like pear, actually, didn't yeah, it? Yeah, something like, like pear. pear. It's yeah. yeah, it's a nice smell. I like it. Yeah, it was, it's pleasant. I, I think that's that's they said that was a new fragrance and they didn't have all the things in in fig so I don't know if they do now or not or if it was just yeah that's true they one. didn't have it all because I was looking for like the I think the hand lotion too yeah which I did get some hand lotion I got this it's like a sample I don't know if you can see it I think they anyway. have sell the lotion in little bottles oh they do I'm not sure could Maybe. be so I got that to try it and um, I actually really like it it's very smooth. And it's not really greasy, and it absorbs pretty quickly, and I like the smell. And it's this is the Yuzu, and I like that too. They make a good product. Um, and then, of course, we both have the soap for washing the wool, which right. we really like. Yeah, the traditional soap wash. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, um, the flatter, they says on here, starch-free smoothing spray. And so the first thing I used it on was... Um, well, actually, the first thing that we both asked her was, can you put it on your hair? <laughs> That's what I asked. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I think you asked it, too. I'm yeah. like, yeah, can we put that on our hair? <laughs> we both have curly hair, and, and um, you know, it gets kind of out of control. <laughs> Sometimes and we thought, hey, that sounds like a really good idea. And she said, well, you know, technically it's not for use on your person. But... I think she said she had tried it on her hair before. She said in a pinch she has done it. <laughs> so I have not so, tried it on my hair yet. Right, so off-label use, y'all, but, you know, it could work. <laughs> but in the winter. I haven't I haven't tried it on my hair. I put, I put was that Static Guard on my hair before? Which, Are you serious? Yeah, it didn't really work very well. Oh, okay. So that's one of the reasons why I got this. But I've been using new hair products this winter, so I haven't had to try that yet, but... Um, I have tried yeah. it on a sweater, and it did work really well on the sweater. And it didn't make me break out, which Static Guard makes me break out. So now that's good. I tried it on a coat. Um, I have this, uh, um, it's a down coat, you know, and it has that typical, like, you know, staticky lining that makes your hair look like you stuck your finger in a socket. And um, so <laughs> I pulled my coat out, and before I put it on, I just sprayed this stuff the flatter on the inside of the coat and it was fine. That was the coat I, I wore the day we went to, to tour the old houses and I never had a problem with static that day. So it, it works great for that. Um, I She said that it's popular with um, the uh, the quilters as, uh, as, you know, to spray on your fabric before, you know, after it's been washed, but, but before you're, or when you're ironing it. So I did try it for that, and um, it does work pretty nice there. It gives, okay. gives the quilting cotton that nice crispy feel, like it's just off the bolt, even though it's been washed. Huh. Um, and and I, I think it says on here that if you want it, you can control the amount of crisp that you get by the amount of spray that you put on it. I haven't really experimented with it. But. Next time I might also have a recipe for making homemade starch. Um, the... the the lady at our craft group has made her own, and she's going to give us the recipe. So hopefully, but that will be after the new year because um, we don't meet again until after, sometime in January. Oh. But I'll ask her about it, and um, so it could be another alternative. Of course, I haven't tried it, obviously, because I don't have the recipe yet. But um, another, cool, another way to get starch other than Niagara starch spray. <laughs> Which is what I have at home, so, which is okay. I hardly ever iron anything, so this is like, <laughs> yeah, I avoid it whenever the possible. The only thing I, the only time I ever get out my iron is when I'm sewing. <laughs> I actually have a steamer, too, um, which works pretty good, but it's not, it doesn't give that crispness like an iron does, um, but it works okay. It gets the wrinkles out. Yeah, it kind of gets the wrinkles out, but if you really want that crispy stuff, you have to iron the steamer, just won't do it. Yeah, both of this. So I'll go to another product. Okay. 
This one we always, well, of course, I've only been to the New York. Yeah, we've been fire gone there twice. twice. So <laughs> every time we've gone, we have to visit this booth. And this is um, called Heal My Hands. This is the best stuff ever. Yeah, this is great. And it way. comes in a, a couple different um, flavors. Yeah, flavors. This one is Lavender Mint. If I can turn it the right way. And, um, but anyway, it's like a, it was just really, this is the greatest part of it. Not the greatest part, but a really great part is it's not one of those lids you have to pry off and, you know, you can't get it off and stuff. It's a twist lid. Isn't that great? I didn't even think about that as a feature, but you're right. Yeah. Oh my <laughs> gosh, it's best. And then it's just this little cake that comes out. It's just a lotion bar. Yeah. And then you just kind of hold it for a couple seconds and let it like melt and then you do it like that. Yeah. And it works really great. But the best line. The best case. Oh my gosh, that is so great. Because even after, like, if your hands are, like, not a little bit greasy or wet or something, you can still get it open because it's not a pry-off. So that's really great. But you're right, yeah. They yeah. also make a uh, chapstick, which is really awesome. Oh, I have that! But it's... Did I bring it? Let me see. <laughs> Sorry. I thought I brought it over here, but... Uh, intermission. Uh, yeah, yeah, intermission. Yeah, intermission. <laughs> it probably fell on the floor or something. But yeah, I brought one of their chapsticks too, and I really like that, and I use that all the time now. And um, it's nice. I don't it remember nice. what flavor I got, though. Um, they, they do have lanolin in them, so yeah. if you have a sensitivity, that's yeah. something to be aware of. But I think that's what makes it good, actually, yeah. is the lanolin. But it does, I don't think it has mineral oil in it, which is a lot of times no. it can be the mineral oil causing a sensitivity, not the lanolin. Because I used to think I was allergic to the lanolin in some of the products, but I can use these products. So I'm thinking it might have been more of a mineral oil problem than the lanolin Or something problem. else that was in there. Could have been, yeah. Although, since I've been gluten-free, um, I don't have as many issues with a lot of things. So, um, yeah, so and it, it could have been, been an extension of that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, and then I want to show this one, too. Okay. So this... And I think her card's inside, which I'll look in a second. But this is a, and I'm sure you've all seen it if you've been to the festival. New York again. Yeah, New York. This is where all this started, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, my obsession with knitting started with there. Because we've been to the one in Orange County, Virginia a couple times. I don't think I have her card. And, um, oh, okay, here it is. Ha ha. Ta-da! This is the person who makes this cake. And this is the inside. This is just one of the cases she makes because she makes many different flavors. And as you can see, it's beautiful and it works really well. And I also bought these. This case was specifically made for interchangeable needles. Yeah, right? this was yeah, this one's made for specifically for interchangeable needles. I'm gonna look her up online because my daughter has a whole set of the full length um, knitting needles. So I'd like to get her a case for hers. And this, I also bought these at the festival too, which are so pretty. These are the nitpicks. The, yeah, the nitpicks. Bamboo interchangeable. interchangeable. I forget what they call them. They're the multicolored ones. Yeah, rainbow or something like that. I don't know. But <laughs> um, we're going to name them. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so that's, um, and I also bought my son a starter set of... Oh, the try it set. Yeah, the try it yeah. set, but I think his are metal. I don't think I bought him the the uh, bamboo. I don't think I did. I don't remember. Yeah, Knit Picks makes this try it set. It's got a couple of different needle sizes and a couple of cables. Yeah. Um, and it actually has a long, like, I bought this kit, and it has a couple different length of the cables, but my son's set has a 40-inch cable, which I don't have, so... Um, did you swipe it? I didn't swipe it yet. <laughs> But I've told him I'm going to swipe it. <laughs> you can also buy the cables individually. <laughs> yeah, you can. <laughs> so, um, anyway, so that is... Um, oh, and I changed the button on mine, too. Isn't that an awesome button? She had a... The, the woman who makes these had a, had a bucket full of buttons so that if anybody got, like, the case but not the button, you could change it out. Yeah. So I bought... Which was neat. I bought the what? A new button for mine. She had a very nice display, too. She did. And I just love these cases. I, you know, when you look at it, you have it so simple I could make it. But will I make it? Yes. Which is, the answer the is question. no, which is why I'm <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, 
sometimes it comes down to that. It's more, you know, <laughs> yeah, you can make it, but you know what? There's so many other things I'd like to make, so let's, <laughs> let's be realistic about this. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> which is, you know, how we get a lot of things. Yeah. So I have, a, I have an enabling for you guys, and um, this is another, another, and it's been farm, uh, camera, help me out there, there we go. This is a Knit Spin var Farm bat, or two bats, I bought two of them. And uh, actually in purchasing this, Joanna, this is my first experience with cart jacking because I actually had something else in my cart along with these things and when I went to pay, it was gone. Um, so, uh, I, I wouldn't so you mean surprised. somebody bought it while you were selling somebody, your cart? Yeah, somebody bought it while I was, I was checking something and when I clicked pay, or, you know, buy and pay, or whatever the button is on Etsy, um, uh, a little thing popped up and said, oh, you can't buy this. And I was like, oh, what happened? <laughs> <laughs> so, um, and that was right after she, her listings went live. So, you know, well, I'm sure Joanna already knows. She could probably tell right away that her stuff sold out really fast. Anyway, I have two three-ounce bats. They're called Caneal Bay White Caps. Um, they have Alpaca Angelina, Blueface Lassiter, Merino Romney, Silk, Silk Noil, and Wensleydale. And, um, I don't think I said before, but her Etsy shop is knitspinfarm.etsy.com. Um, and she has a podcast too, which I'm sure everybody knows about by now, because it's awesome. Anyway, so, here's the bat. It's a lovely blue. Look at that. Isn't that awesome? I don't know what I'm going to do with them, but I have six ounces worth, so I have some options. It'll be fun. It was a lot of fun to spend the, the sample bat that I got. So, do you have anything else to share today? That is it. Right. Oh, yes, I do. Wait. Oh. Yes, I forgot. that these, like this, this is a Barnes & Noble bag. Not that they're paying me to say this, but um, <laughs> I just love these bags. But my, we would like it if you did. I get it if you would. <laughs> but I love these bags for um, my knitting all stu stuff also, just because they're lightweight and they're quite large and they're pretty. So that wasn't planned. But um, this is what I wanted to talk about. So next time... Can you see that? <sighs> Looms for rag weaving by Primitive Primitive Stuff, and I bought this at the um, the New York Sheep and uh, Wool Festival, and um, part of part of the purchase was a gift from my sister. <laughs> and um, anyway, so this is um, a kit that makes four different size things, so you can adjust the loom to make a different size. I've put it together, but I have not started making it. So next time we meet, hopefully I will have um, something going on with that. Some awesomeness. Yeah, let me see if there's a good picture in here I can show you. Hmm. By way of description, it's it's like a pin loom, kind of. Yeah, I guess that's what it's called. And you I guess that's the best one here. Make kind of braided rugs on it. Yeah, braided rugs. And that's... One of the things I've always wanted to do is make a braided rug, although the one I want to make is, you know, supposedly, like, huge and fits under my kitchen table, and um, <laughs> maybe one day, but this one thing at a time. <laughs> yeah. The largest one this makes is two feet by three feet, so definitely it will not fit under my kitchen table. That's a pretty good chunk, though. Yeah. But it's really neat because I can make, well, I guess it's all square, I mean, rectangles, so I can't make the cute little round, you know, oval ones you see in the... Um, like in who sells this stuff? Well, those are just Landed braided or something like that together. I think. Is that what it is? Mm-hmm. So this one will make it will make I can make a stair tread with it, but it's a rectangle stair tread. Not that I need one, but I can do that. Oh, it's nice to have options. Yeah. So next time, hopefully, this will be in progress because I have it set up and I've been collecting my cotton used cotton stuff, and um, I just have to start slicing it up so I can start weaving with it. So you're gonna go totally. Rag rug. It's definitely style. going to be a rag rug because it's all used clothing cool. that I have. And who knows what it will look 
like because it's t-shirts and flannel <laughs> pants and you know other cotton things and of course they're telling you to get this like you know like this this like lovely quilters, quilters cotton, cotton that's you know ten dollars a yard yeah. and <laughs> so well she said you can I think they had some that were made out of other things but yeah as long as you cut them I'm sure this is going to be fun to cut. I think the moral of the story is whatever you got. Yeah. Yeah, I might have to buy one of those cutting machines. I think there's little ones that you can buy. You just like... Yeah, you just... Strips. I know they have ones for leather. Because I've seen them for leather. And you can put run the leather through it to, like, to make a belt. And it like cuts the belt. Uh, but, um... So I would assume they have one for this, but I doubt I'll be that. It'll probably be cheap. Just do it myself. And by the time you get it all woven <laughs> together, who's going to know it's like a little bit like, shaped like this? Nobody will be able to tell because it kind of folds in as you weave. Yeah. yeah. So so I'm excited about that and I was so happy to find it because I've been talking about getting, doing this and I got checked out a book from the library about how to braid rugs. Did and, you really? Yeah. But it's this huge complicated thing, you know, and they're all wool rugs. And um, so this should be fun, I think. I'm excited to see how it turns out. Yeah, me too. Okay. All right, well, that's it. We're done for today. Thanks for visiting. Yes, thank you. See you next time. Bye. Bye.